This is Dorian Yates. He single-handedly ushered in the mass monster era by winning the 1993 Mr. Olympia event. But make no mistake about it, guys. There were massive bodybuilders before Dorian Yates. This was just the first example of a Mr. Olympia champion that was selected based on his size. And we'll throw in there the conditioning in there as well. But anyway, like I said, prior to the 1990s, there was the 1980s. And prior to that, it was the 70s. And guys like Frank Zane were Mr. Olympia champions. So in the 1980s, the judges were not really placing that much emphasis on size, things of that nature. And a guy like Bertle Fox, who we will be beginning with, he placed relatively low in comparison uh, with a guy like Frank Zane. I mean, look at the, the wheels, the arms. It's boys versus men. And I know I titled this video bodybuilders that you may not have heard of you might might not know but i'm sure most of you have heard of brutal Bertel fox but i did my best guys and i am hoping that there's going to be at least one bodybuilder one or two bodybuilders for you guys that you never heard of but like i said most of you guys have heard of Bertel fox because he is quite infamous and i won't get into his infamous nature. This is basically just to show you how big the guy was. I mean, yes, Lee Haney, he was probably a, a somewhat of a mass monster, but he was an Olympia champion. This is for guys that were not really celebrated for their, uh, their, their accomplishments. They weren't given any big titles. Look at the arm difference, guys. I mean, yeah, Lee Haney has a huge rib cage expansion, big chest too. So does Fox. Look at his far peck. But individualize the arms. This is a modern day mass monster bicep tricep combination, making Lee Haney look, with all due respect, like a small boy. Anyway, Bertle Fox, like I said, guys, this man, arm size was ridiculous. Keep in mind, this was the 1980s. So, realistically, the mass monster era probably could have started before Dorian Yates' time. But we won't get into that right now. We will, however, take a look at the gentleman that is standing right next to Bertle Fox. We all know how big Bertle is. And the gentleman beside him is Joseph Gralmas. And he was massive. Look how wide this man's structure is. Bertle still might have bigger biceps. Maybe, maybe. But look at the width, the wheels, the, uh, the just like I said, the, the width of this guy. He is thick all over. And sadly, he only competed twice at the Olympia, 86, 87, placing 10th and 15th. So obviously, like I said, guys, the Mass Monster era could have very well started with this guy. He had to get a high placing. He would have came in bigger the next year. And, you know, you know how it works. I'm sure a lot of you guys have not heard of this guy, but no, know, knowing how smart you guys are and educated as far as bodybuilding is concerned, I bet you dollars to donuts that at least a few of you guys have heard of Joseph. Let's go switch gears to this guy here, and this was a a famous NABA athlete. He competed for NABA, former multiple time Mister Universe. It is Edward Kowak. And a lot of you diehards know exactly who this guy is. Look at how thick he was. And pitchers by himself do no justice on how thick, well-developed this guy was. Take a look at this picture. I know it's not very clear. It's a rusty old screenshot, but hey, better than none. You know who that is beside Edward Kowak? That is Charles Claremont. He's no small potatoes. You know, he's not a mass monster. But look how big and bloody well thick this Edward Kowak is. What a true mass monster, guys. He was winning the, the NABA title. I mean, this picture here, I think, is from the, the early 80s. To be honest with you, a guy that reminds me a lot of Edward Kowak is this guy, Lance Dreyer. And they competed in NABA around the same time. Then Edward quit. He left NABA. 
but he returned. And the thing about Lance Dreyer, he used to compete in the IFBB. And then he went to NABA. And he was massive, make no mistake about it. In the back to match, he was just thick all over the place, is Lance Dreyer. And when it comes to guns, this guy's arms were 20 plus, must have been 24 inches, this guy. I remember seeing him in the 1982 Olympia, competed in the 82 and 83 at the Olympia. And I was just astonished with how big he was and conditioned this man was. And when they announced the placings, 15th. He placed pretty much dead last. One guy placed under him. He was ripped off. He was ripped off. A true mass monster. In 1982, this guy was unbelievable. Now go over to, back over to the IFBB. And they were no short of mass monsters. This is Phil Hill. And he was huge. Not the widest clavicle in the world, but trust me, when it came to wheel development, this guy would easily stand on the stage with anybody in the IFBB today. No doubt, from calves to quads, Phil Hill was a true mass monster. And don't get me wrong, he may have had a, a fairly narrow clavicle, but he had a set of guns, second to none, this guy was huge. This guy was huge. And I'm sure some of you guys have heard of this guy, Phil Hill. But for those of you who have never heard of Phil Hill, I mean, look him up. There's plenty more pictures of this guy. He was truly to be something to behold, this guy. Relatively perfect, aside, like I said, from the clavicle width. But really, when you look how big his delts are and the arms, not really hurting his physique too bad. So Phil Hill... Ladies and gentlemen, this is a mass monster of the 1980s that you might not have heard of. Here is another gentleman. This is Jeff King. And the thing about King, his name has a ring when you say it real fast. Say it real fast. Wow. <laughs> anyway, the thing about Jeff King is he never competed in the IFBB. He won a, a NABA title here and there. But sadly, we never got to see his true potential. And he had plenty of it, guys. Like a Tom Platts. And hey, Tom Platts was a mass monster too. But I know each and every one of you guys have heard of Tom Platts. Heck, my dad knows who Tom Platts is. But anyway, guys, the wheels on this gentleman, not the only thing that was massive. He had a massive set of guns as well. And because he competed in the 80s, and this reigns true for a lot of these guys, most of these guys. They had aesthetically pleasing physiques as well with tiny midsections, which really accentuated the size of those limbs. So Jeff King truly deserved of a, a mention in this video. And so does this guy, Gunnar Rosbo, another gentleman that never competed in the IFBB, much like Jeff King. And another guy packed with loaded, I'm talking, with muscle. Much like Jeff King is Gunner Rosbo. What a huge big chest and arms on this guy. And keep in mind, keep this in mind. Gunner Rosbo, he only competed from 1975 to 82. So any onstage pictures you see of this guy, it's at least... Or at the most, from 1982, might even be the 70s. But this is unbelievable, truly mass monster type quality development build of muscle in the early 80s. That's unbelievable. And like I said, these uh, Gunnar Rosbo and, and uh, Jeff King, not only do their uh, careers kind of resemble each other, but their physiques as well. What a battle. That never was on the IFBB stage. Jeff King versus versus Gunnar Rosbo. What a match. Anyway, for all of you brainiacs, for all of you bodybuilding nerds like myself that have heard of each and every single one of these guys, I figured I would finish off with this dude. Anybody know? Anybody saying his name at home? I'm sure once I say his name, at least a couple of you do. But anybody know right now? Did I stump anybody? Anyway. This is Tim Belknap. Belknap. Excellent last name. This guy was a true mass monster. He was thick everywhere. Everywhere. Well, I, 
ne never mind. We won't get into that. He was thick, very thick athlete. And this pitcher here, to my knowledge, was in the early 80s. I think this was from 1983. So this guy was massive, massive. So not only would, have been, would it have been the supplements, obviously they were probably all taking the same sort of, you know, juice, things of that nature, but it was probably the training. And not only that, but the dieting as well. And more focus placed on mass for some of these guys. But I guess at the end of the day, it didn't take with the judges. They didn't really focus on that mass, that, uh, that freakish, that freak factor, I guess you could call, for the lack of a better term. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, just a bit of a fun one for you guys. Several bodybuilders here, or a few bodybuilders that maybe you never heard of, and a few that you probably have. But no real famous Olympia champions here. But there is one thing that they all have in common. They are massive and loaded with blockbuster solid 1980s muscle. Hit thumbs up on the video and subscribe to the channel. Have a great day.